I'm Forrest, I'm 14 years old, and today I'm going to Africa without my family. There's an interesting story about how I got here by myself. So before we jump into the African adventure, let's rewind and I'll catch you up to speed. All right, so over the next couple of weeks, we are getting ready to go on this trip to Africa. We're gonna be going to Tanzania, which is on the eastern coast of Africa, kind of near Kenya and Uganda, and we're gonna be visiting with a missionary friend named Glenn Roseberry. He runs a discipleship farm, and we're excited to go over and plug in with all the different discipleship activities they have. We're just kind of going on faith to see how we can be of assistance to Glenn and his ministry. So boys, are you guys getting excited and ready to go? Oh yeah, we're super excited. All right, pack it up. I should also mention that we are going on this trip with about 10 other people from our church community. A couple of other father-son and father-daughter combos. All right, now that we're all packed up, we're gonna head to the airport and fly to Africa. So we have an interesting and unfortunate turn of events. Although I have a valid visa to get into Tanzania, the TSA won't let me board this plane because my passport expires in less than six months from now. It expires in five months and 18 days, which is 12 days shy of a requirement that I wasn't even aware of till I got here today. Fortunately, the airline gave me credit for my tickets and I'm gonna take my other boys, Joseph and Ezra, to Alaska. Instead, we'll have a video about that coming for you guys soon. So unfortunately, I'm sending Forrest on his own, but I know he'll do good and he's in good hands. So I guess I'm going to Africa by myself. Although I'm disappointed, I'm also excited for the journey. So let's jump on this plane and let the adventure begin. Over the next few minutes, Forrest is going to share with you what he did while he was in Africa. However, if you stay tuned to the end of the video, he'll share with you what his trip to Africa did in him. After almost two days of travel, we landed in Kilimanjaro. We were all exhausted and ready for some rest. Our friend picked us up at the airport and we drove about a half hour to where we'd be staying for the next 10 days. Glenn Roseberry is the founder of Kingdom Matters Organization. His main helpers are two families who moved from Pakistan. We had no idea that by the end of this trip, we would become best friends. Wednesday was our first full day on the ground and it would not be easily forgettable. After a quick breakfast, we loaded into a vehicle and headed to a nearby house church. We arrived a little bit late, so the service had already started. We were very warmly and loudly welcomed by everyone. The African people were so energetic and joyful during the worship time, it made us all want to join in. After a few minutes of singing and dancing, we all introduced ourselves. Then we had a time of prayer for the sick and injured. When we had finished, one of the men from our group shared a short message through a translator. When the service was over, we thanked the people for having us and headed back to the farm and fell asleep dreaming about the day to come.
We woke up early the next morning and drove to another house church. We had another amazing time of worship, and the people at this house church were even more energetic than the last. After the worship time, we shared another short message through a translator. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. After that was over, we got to participate in foot washing. This was one of the most memorable experiences from the trip. The person whose feet I was washing was from a completely different culture, language, and background, but he was also a dear brother in Christ. I felt very privileged to be a part of that experience, and I will always remember it. When we were done, we drove back to the farm and talked and played with the children. Late that night, we climbed under the mosquito nets, tired but ready for the day ahead. Every Saturday, Glenn sends a group of three or four to go out and evangelize door to door. Me and three others went to a street market to share the gospel. We gathered a small group of people and read through a pamphlet that Glenn's ministry put together. We told the people about the house churches near them and many agreed to come. Sunday was baptism day. We all gathered at the farm to begin the usual worship that we had all come to love. We sang and danced with the people, then Glenn shared a message on baptism. Of this world, they're all passing away. But we will rule and reign with him forever and ever. Amen. We come and follow Jesus. After he had finished, we headed down to the baptismal to start baptizing. As soon as the baptizing was over, we gathered the African children that were there together and handed out gift bags. This was a wonderful experience, seeing how happy and thankful they were for such little things. Tuesday was one of the most exciting days of the trip. Early in the morning, we left our lodging and piled into two Jeeps to head out on a safari. After that, we drove back to the farm and had another meal. We went to bed knowing that our trip was coming to an end. We had made so many good friends and memories, but we knew we had to go home eventually.
Wednesday was our last day in Africa. It was a bittersweet day. We all shared some of our memories and favorite experiences. Then we drove away from the farm for the last time. All right, Forrest, well, I'm sorry I couldn't be on the trip with you, but it looks like you managed well without me. Yeah, yeah, it was, I had a really good time. Thanks for showing yourself to be mature and responsible enough under the care of our, uh, our friends there. Mm -hmm. And you've just shown us what you did on the trip, but I'd be curious, what did the trip do in you? The trip really uh, inspired me to have more of a, a joyful spirit in worship uh, toward the Lord and just I mean, how all the people there are so joyful, and that, that's been the main takeaway from the trip, and so many other things, just being grateful for all the little things we have that they, they don't have over there. And if you ever have the opportunity to go overseas and visit a missionary or just go on your own, it's a really good opportunity. I learned a lot, and it'll, it changed my life forever. And here's an encouragement for you parents. I would not have chosen to send Forrest to Africa without me. And as hard as it is for me to admit, it might have been better for him that I wasn't there. When we trust the Lord and when we place our children into his care, we can ensure that their lives will impact others in meaningful ways. So with that, we love you guys. God bless you. See you next. And we'll see you on the next adventure.